love her, comfort her, honor and keep her in sickness and in health, forsaking all others. Be faithful to her for as long as you both shall live. If so, please answer, I will. I will. Karen, will you have this man to be your husband, to live together in the holy covenant of marriage? Will you love him, comfort him, honor and keep him in sickness and in health, forsaking all others? Be faithful to him for as long as you both shall live. And if so, please answer, I will. To the parents, I want to ask you, do you promise to encourage Scott and Karen in their marriage, to present an example of love and devotion for them to emulate, and to help them build a strong, stable home for themselves and their family? If so, please answer, we will. We will. We will. Scott and Karen, uh, marriage is a lot like a lump of coal. I bet you didn't expect me to say that, so oh, you all can sit. Sorry, I, I forgot my cue. <laughs> didn't expect me to say that. I'm going to explain. Cold doesn't just happen. Are you taking pictures? It's I'm recording it. A couple different things that are individual and unique, but under the right circumstances, they slowly bond and meld together until they become something entirely new. You are both incredible and wonderful individuals. But over the past few years, you have slowly bonded and melded together and have become something entirely new. You have each changed as a result of the relationship as much as you have changed the other. You've become more and more bonded in desires and decisions. Friends and family who once saw you as individuals now see you as a couple. Today, you come to be married. From this day forward, you will no longer be two separate individuals. You are becoming one. When one of you hurts, you will both suffer. And when one of you succeeds, you will both celebrate. And like a lump of coal, from this day forward, you are of the same substance. But just as coal doesn't live in a vacuum, fortunately, neither do you. Coal is found deep under the Earth's surface, where there are all kinds of pressures. In like manner, your marriage exists in a world full of all kinds of pressures. Time, finances, career, relationships, someday kids, maybe. Parents, holidays. The world is full of all kinds of stresses. All kinds of pressure. And one thing that we talked about is that pressure moves things, doesn't it? When the pressures of life hit, they will either push you together or push you apart. Marriages that aren't strong far too often crack and are crushed under the pressures when life bears down upon them. The tragic debris of broken homes and unhappy homes that litter our social landscape bear sad testimony to this. But just as the pressures of life can push marriages apart, they can also drive you closer together. Instead of cracking, couples that come together through stress become stronger, more resilient. The difference is that couples that come together constantly choose selfless love over selfishness. Do you know what happens to a lump of coal when it comes together under pressure? <coughs> yes, it eventually becomes a diamond. The most beautiful, durable, and enduring of all jewels. Scott, Karen, I am excited that you get to unite in marriage. You have decided to reject the traditional and the uh, contemporary models of marriage and have chosen to follow the biblical model. You have each made a commitment to follow Christ's example of selfless love and sacrifice and submission and service to the other. There is truly no room for selfishness in the way of Christ. And over the past few months, I have witnessed each of you individually choose selfless love over selfishness. As the pressures of life press in, let your love for one another drive you deeper into each other's arms and hearts. If you do, your love will grow every bit as beautiful and durable and dependable and enduring as the diamond that will represent it. Treasure your love, and your love will truly become a treasure. As enduring as love is,
so is the ceremony of marriage. This ceremony was the first and the oldest ceremony in the entire world. It was celebrated in the beginning in the presence of God himself. Marriage is a gift of God given to comfort the sorrows of life and to magnify its many joys. Marriage is the clasping of hearts. It is the blending of, of lives into one. Your marriage must stand not by the authority of the state or the seal that's going to be put upon your marriage certificate, but by the strength of your love and by the power of your faith in each other and in God. You can have this kind of home if you continue to recognize God as a source of romance and love and affection, for these are his gifts. Build your home on a spiritual foundation, for with God you have everything, and without him you will have nothing. Now, as your hands are joined together, I want you to express your vows of devotion and love towards one another. Scott, will you repeat after me this, this vow to Karen, saying, I, Scott, I, Scott, take you, Karen, take you, Karen to be my wife. Be my wife. To have and to hold, to have and to hold, from this day forward, from this day forward, <coughs> for better, for worse, for better, for worse, for richer, for poor, for richer or poor, in sickness and in health, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish, to love and to cherish, until we are parted by death, until we are parted by death. As God is my witness, as God is my witness, I give you my promise, I give you my promise. Karen, will you repeat this vow to Scott after me, saying, I, Karen. Take you, Scott, to be my husband, to have and to hold from this day forward, for better, for worse, in, for richer, for poor, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish until we are parted by death. As God is my witness, I give you my promise. Bless, O Lord, these rings and the vows by which this man and this woman have bound themselves together through Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen. Scott, will you please take Karen's ring and place it on the second finger of her left hand and repeat after me, saying, With this ring, with this ring, I seal my promise. I seal my promise to be your faithful and loving husband. To be your faithful and loving husband. As God is my witness. As God is my witness. Aaron, would you please take Scott's ring, place it on the second finger of his left hand, repeat after me, saying, With this ring, I seal my promise to be your faithful and loving wife. God is my witness. Right, please join me in prayer. Eternal God, creator and preserver of life, author of salvation and giver of all grace, Please look with favor upon this man and this woman, whom you make one flesh in your holy matrimony. Grant that their wills be so knit together in your will, and that their spirits be so knit in your spirit, that they may each grow in love and peace with you and with each other all the days of their lives. Give them grace when they hurt each other to recognize and acknowledge their faults, and to seek and to forgive each other. Make their life together a sign of Christ's love in this sinful and broken world. Give them such fulfillment and mutual affection that they may each reach out in love and concern for others. Please grant that all married persons who have witnessed these vows may find that their lives strengthen and their loyalty is confirmed. Through Christ Jesus the Lord we pray. Amen. Amen. Scott and Karen, you have come before us and before God and have expressed your desire to be husband and wife. You have shown your love and affection by the joining of hands. You have made promises of faith and devotion each to the other. And you have sealed these promises by the giving and the receiving of rings. I therefore pronounce that you are husband and wife. What God has joined together, let no one separate.
Scott, you may now kiss your bride. and recognition from the homes from which they came. <laughs> Friends, family, I now present to you for the very first time Mr. and Mrs. Scott and Karen Witt. Thank you. 